We just bid last week on a plumbing business in the state of Florida. The offer we made was measured, it was calculated, and it was thoughtful. We submitted the offer and we knew there was somebody else bidding against us. We knew that we were not the only ones making an offer on this company, which is normal if the seller has representative that's listing the deal. In this case, the seller did. So we made the offer and we made the follow-up call the day that the offer had expired, the day of the expiration of the offer, which is standard, right? You don't want to have your offer get shopped. So we, we call up the, the representative representing the seller and say, hey, is this a go? And he says, hey, the broker says, hey, had it not been for a big private equity group that swooped in at the last minute and made a much higher offer, you would have been perfect. You were just barely better than the other bid. But yeah, this really much larger group came in. They're a cash buyer. They don't need financing. And so obviously the seller is going to go in that direction. I was very frustrated when I got the news because it's one of those where you play your hand correctly. You make the right offer. You're just a little higher than the other guy that's bidding and you really do everything you can to put yourself in that winning position. And yet it doesn't go in your favor. And yet this is part of sourcing deals. And this is part of the process of deal making. Sometimes you can play your hand correctly and still lose. And you just have to shrug it off and keep going later that night, the team, uh, our team at private utilities, we got on a call. And we looked at another deal in our pipeline and we crafted an offer that night. We'd already done the, the, the quantitative work, the math work to know what we were capable and comfortable offering. And we made that offer. We submitted that offer this morning and now we're waiting to see where that lands. And so I guess this is really a story of one, recognizing that sometimes you can do everything right, but you'll get bullied off the ball by just a simply put bigger, more capitalized, well-capitalized outfit. That's part of the game. There's always a bigger fish. You have to accept that. Number two, having a robust pipeline of deals allows you to quickly pivot, but only if three, you stay unemotional or at least quickly get over your emotions. I'll, I'll be honest, I was very frustrated for about 45 minutes, but I got over it. We got over it. We made a new offer and we're back in the game. So this is really the way it goes. Even in a market like this, where there's a bit of uncertainty, there's still a lot of capital fishing for a limited number of deals. So if you find something that you really like, strike while the iron's hot and try to get that thing under contract before a bigger, batter player comes in and, uh, takes your deal. That's it on this one. If you're an accredited investor who would like to consider making main street investments in plumbing and HVAC businesses with Bright Utilities, go to brightutilities.com. And if you are interested in buying businesses as an acquisitions entrepreneur, go to jasonpaulrogers.com. And with that, I'll talk to you in the next video.